The indictment announced yesterday by special counsel Jack Smith against former President Donald Trump were charges built upon the work of the January 6th Select Committee. Take a look. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6th, 2021, was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. <laughs> Described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. We were winning in all the key locations by a lot, actually. And then our numbers started miraculously getting whittled away in secret. Lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the U.S. government, the nation's process of collecting, counting, and certifying the results of the presidential election. And he looked at Mike Pence, and I hope Mike is going to do the right thing. I hope so. I hope so, because if Mike Pence does the right thing, we win the election. The men and women of law enforcement who defended the U.S. Capitol on January 6th are heroes. They are patriots, and they are the very best of us. Hold the line! Hold the line! Hold the line! Hold the line! Break the line! They did not just defend a building or the people sheltering in it. They put their lives in the line to defend who we are as a country and as a people. The man seized the opportunity of my vulnerability, grabbed the front of my gas mask, and used it to beat my head against the door. I remember thinking there was a very good chance I would be torn apart or shot to death with my own weapon. Since the attack on our capital, the Department of Justice has remained committed to ensuring accountability for those criminally responsible for what happened that day. Joining us now, former Republican Congressman Denver Riggleman. He served as an advisor for the January 6th House Select Committee. And I guess, first of all, your take on the indictment and, and, and so many echoes from the work that this select committee did. Well, I was, you know, thanks, Mick. I was so surprised that it came that quickly, to be honest. And, you know, the first thing I looked for was the descriptors, because you know who I was looking for to see if Mark Meadows was actually described as one of the co-conspirators. Mm -hmm. When I didn't see that descriptor, I had an idea that uh, maybe Mark Meadows was part, you know, of the uh, chain of uh, evidence that uh, Jack needed to go forward. Uh, also, you know, when you see somebody like Cheesebro, Megan, you talk about the January 6th committee and how thorough they documented him specifically, I think, which is the fifth co-conspirator, it really sort of made me proud. <laughs> because uh, when you're looking at that, all the way through December 9th, you know, the three major examples, I believe, if I remember correctly, that the committee made was just so astounding. Um, last thing, you know, as we get started, I don't think this is the end of it. I think we're seeing the legal side of it as far as the alternate electors uh, and what Giuliani did and Powell and people like that. But the other side, I think the command and control portion still hasn't really been addressed. And I don't think Jack Smith has done with Donald Trump yet. No, and, um, you know, Joe, when you look at uh, the potentials here, uh, mm -hmm. he mentioned Mark Meadows. Mm -hmm. um, there could be a lot of flippers at play, uh, just flipping, completely flipping on Trump. So quest raising questions, will we see superseding charges or just people who have completely flipped to help this case? Right. I mean, great question. And, and John Heilman, uh, we we've we have been uh, on Mark Meadows watch, not us so much as Donald Trump's own people wondering where he was, what he was up to, where very worried that he was going to flip for quite some time. Uh, I think the congressman's point that he wasn't listed as a co-conspirator, at least yet, uh, suggests that perhaps uh, he did exactly what his lawyer said he was going to do. And that was tell the truth. Uh, when required to do so by law. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are with, 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 with Meadows, with Pence, how much uh, Pence cooperated, and also with Jack Smith saying, hey, this is an ongoing investigation. Maybe not in that manner, but he, he did. He made sure to tell everybody this is an ongoing investigation and more people may be named. Yeah. Uh, well, taking those, I mean, I think the first two of those questions, Joe, are kind of uh, the, the separate. The, the, the third question is important, but uh, is not the kind of uh, to, speaks to the big McGilla here in the room, which is relates to what's going to happen with Trump. But I do think 
every indication, and again, always stipulating I'm not a lawyer, even a, a simple country lawyer like yourself, every indication that we have here is very strongly suggestive of the notion that Mark Meadows has been cooperating uh, and that that is what uh, a lot of the tea leaves here strongly suggest. I think the thing we know basically from this indictment, though, the most one of the most powerful things in it, which I'm sure you guys have, have mentioned over the course of, the, of your coverage this morning, is the fact that this quote, which is on the front of newspapers uh, and on on websites all over America right now, uh, the, the quote of clearly directly from Mike Pence, because uh, he's the only one who could have witnessed it, is the quote of Trump saying, you're too honest, when he asked Mike Pence to subvert the election. And then Trump saying to Pence when Pence refused, you're too honest. Why is that important? Well, it's important because we now know that Mike Pence, who has to have been the source of that quote, that is what Mike Pence will testify to if he's called in this case before a court. The former vice president of the United States will have to get up in a courtroom uh, in a way that he's been able to keep his testimony in secret because of the grand jury, not appear before the 1-6 committee, uh, now in the middle of a campaign where he's, try he's trying to become the Republican nominee, potentially. Uh, he could be drawn onto the courtroom, stand, court, the, the witness stand to say those words. Donald Trump said, you're too honest. And that to me is an incredibly important fact because it leads to the thing, Joe, you've been hammering on all morning, that Donald Trump, by implication, if he's saying Mike Pence is too honest to help him subvert the election, it's another reflection of the fact that Trump knew he lost. And I think that will be a powerful piece of courtroom testimony and also an incredibly powerful moment just in the drama mm -hmm. of this case to, for Republicans seeing Mike Pence or hearing Mike Pence, reading about Mike Pence, going on the witness stand and saying those words, man, that's a bit, that's a big moment that we're pretty sure now will happen. You're too honest, page 33 of the indictment if you're reading along at home. And just above that, on Christmas Day, six days before the you're too honest moment, Vice President Pence calls Donald Trump to wish him a very Merry Christmas to him and his family. Donald Trump says, yeah, 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 but I need you on January 6th to go flip the electors, Mike Pence says, sir, I don't have the authority to change the outcome of the election. So, um, Congressman Riggleman, we've been talking this morning uh, about your former colleagues, Speaker McCarthy, chief among them, being confronted with this extraordinary document and saying, yeah, but what about Hunter Biden? So how do you explain now the continued fear of Donald Trump's supporters even in the face of this, even in the face of the thing they live through, even in the face, in the case of Speaker McCarthy, a day when he called Donald Trump, found his courage for a moment and yelled at him to stop this because they're coming to kill some of us, it would appear on January 6th. How do you explain, even after this indictment, your former colleagues, not all of them, some of your former colleagues, hanging in and at least publicly saying they're willing to look the other way? I tell you, the uh, boy, what a question. It's a lot to unpack, but I think I can do it. First of all, when you talk about Hunter Biden, the whataboutism defense is going to be huge. And by the way, as you guys know, I have the forensics on the Hunter Biden data, right? I, I've been doing that also, uh, which I've seen that the same people behind J6 are behind the Hunter Biden laptop. It goes back to Bannon and Giuliani. And if you look at Giuliani, it looks like he's one of the ones indicted. So it gets more and more dangerous as they go down the Hunter Biden laptop route. The second thing, when you're talking about congressional representatives, I think there's a huge pucker factor going on with mm -hmm. some of the people in the Mark Meadows text, especially the people that were pushing Eastman and Clark. So if you look at Scott Perry, you look at Mike Lee, uh, if you look at the congressional or you look at the text and the congressmen and congresswomen in the text, you're talking about, what, around three dozen that we had found in the text messages. And really, the Mark Meadows text messages was the roadmap. And the third thing is a radicalization pipeline. If you're looking at what the Purple team did on the committee, I think that's why I was talking about Jack Smith, is that right now, um, we still haven't looked at the command and control, how they raised money on the lie, what the fundraising looked like, the hyperbole and outrage, how they targeted people for those type of monies and the huge money-making operation between November and January, the 250 to 255 million that the Trump campaign raised during that time on the Stop the Steal messaging. So when uh, when you all are talking about all these things, right, all these rappers that are coming with Jack Smith and what the January 6th committee did, I do believe this is just the tip of the iceberg. I believe that the Hunter Biden laptop it's going to be used for what about isms, which is pretty weak. I do think the congressional representatives are really scared today when you're looking at the evidence. And I think we still have the whole command and control side that was done as far as the radicalization pipeline and, and maybe, you know, down to wire fraud and things like that. So, again, I think we're just uh, I think it's just starting, to be honest.